All right. Welcome back, everyone. It's been a while, but I got Sierra Smith back from Homes and Hustles, and she's actually hustling. She's been super busy, so we've had a hard time connecting, but welcome back, Sierra. Hey, thanks. I'm glad to be back. And yeah, I've been busy and I'll be busy again next week, but I'm glad that um, it works out to be like back in my office and we can sit down and record because I miss doing this every week. What? No, no. um doing it from the vehicle anymore with the assignment from un- ed- uneducated economist surround system and everything. I know. I mean, the sound was really good. So maybe I will try that again. Yeah. But yeah. So today, you know, kind of want to maybe touch on something that's been in the news a lot recently. It's about you know, we can see a lot of, you know, squatter activity going on. It's kind of the headlines right now. So maybe do you have any experience with that or do you want to kind of touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so I have been seeing it pop up more and more, um, you know, that that people are are squatting and that landlords are having um, issues getting the squatters out. And I think the most recent one I saw even was, you know, the the homeowner was like arrested for trying to get the, the squatters out of her house. And so it is it's wild, um, you know, and I, and I read somewhere someone say like, I, you know, I can't believe that, you know, squatters have rights. Like it would be a felony if it were any other piece of property. Like if it, if they had, you know, gotten in your car, right. And changed the locks and you couldn't get in your car, like then that's a felony. <laughs> um, but it, when it's in the house, you know, they, they for some reason, you know, there, there starts to be like this whole, you know, who has legal right to the property and, yeah, so I just I just think it's really interesting and it's you know definitely one of the more intimidating things that could happen if you if you're a landlord and so I think it'd be great to talk about. Yeah, so it got me really curious about where these squatters rights came from and I don't want to get too much into the to the legal side of it because every state is slightly different and has their own rules and regulations but I did chat GPT it and so it kind of basically what it says is you know it's um it's a concept from the medieval England, you know, for a concept of adverse per- possession emerge as a way to encourage productive use of land. And this kind of, this principle was eventually adopted into the legal system of many countries, including the United States. So that's kind of where squatters rights um, have come from. And like I said, I don't want to get too much into the legal part of it, but there was someone that, that put an interesting uh, X or tweet or whatever you want to call it. And it got me really thinking as it more of like a, another obstacle to to prevent new investors from getting started. So this person's tweet basically said, um, a person squatting in your house is much less likely than a person squatting in your head. And, and that's what really got me thinking about. It's just another obstacle for new investors to get started. So what's your thoughts about that? Yeah, I think it falls along those lines, uh, along the lines of, you know, all of, all of the worst case scenarios that can happen. And um, you know, a lot of people talk themselves out of real estate. We were talking about this earlier because they don't want the 2 a.m., you know, toilet is clogged phone call. And as if there's not, you know, so many ways to mitigate a problem like that. And I think this is this is kind of the same thing. And you you can um you can look at the risk and just try your best to mitigate it. And that means, you know, screening your tenants and understanding and learning how to screen tenants and you know, maybe investing in a state that isn't quite so squatter friendly. Um, there's, there's, you know, multiple things you can do, but it is, I mean, at at the end of the day, like it is intimidating and it is part of the risk of owning property, but you know, it's, it's hard to say that you should invest anywhere where it's risk-free. And so that's part of, part of the process. Yeah, totally agree. Like I said, I think it's just another one of those obstacles that, that can prevent people from getting started. And, you know, I've never got that knock on wood, you know, that 2 a.m., you know, toilet phone call yet. But like you said, there's ways to to mitigate it, right? And I think a lot of that goes down to maybe knowing what market you invest in, you know, knowing the, the rules and the legal side of it as far as how they handle evictions or, or the tenant screening process. And that's another thing, you know, the type of properties you invest in or even the screening process that you have in place to, to place these tenants. So those are all type of things that can help, you know, mitigate like you're saying, the, the situation that you have. So that's super important. So as far as for you, like, is there any things that you kind of maybe is that, I know you live in Tennessee, so that's why you're investing there, but is there other markets that you're looking at now that can help with this situation? Uh, You know, I, I really just stay focused on markets that I would have really good connections with. And, 
And so, lo- you know, local obviously is my favorite because, you know, we like to handle most of the things ourselves. And then Oklahoma is the other market that I'm really interested in just because that's where I grew up and I know the areas really well. I feel like I have a, um, you know, in some insider knowledge as far as what's desirable and what's not there and, you know, what will appreciate more and what kind of value add is, a, uh, is there. Um, but I also have connections and family and, and, um, and it's, it's an interesting place that I guess in Oklahoma, there's a lot more, you know, small towns where everybody knows everybody. So a situation like squatters, I, I would have a hard time believing that there wouldn't be some sort of connection there that would be helpful in that scenario. Uh, but yeah, I, I think that you, you know, if you are someone who, when, when someone says, would you invest in real estate? If, if your mind immediately goes to all of the inconveniences or all of these risks, then maybe it's just not for you. Um, but I do think, you know, if you can get past some of those hurdles, like you're saying, another, another thing that, um, is kind of a worst case scenario, but you, you can prepare for it, then it's a great, you know, it's a great investment strategy. But yeah, if you're, if your mind is like, well, what about squatters and what about to- toilet calls? Then it might not be for you if, if you're kind of already in that mindset that like all of these bad things can happen. I, I like how you brought that up because I don't know if you follow, um, it, it, this is kind of a little bit off topic, but it's even about just buying a home, purchasing a home. So I don't know if you follow um, Logan Motoshami on on X and you know Instagram, but he's with Housing Wire. But he always mm-hmm. says that if if you're asking someone if I should buy a home right now, someone that you just met on social media or someone that you don't even know, and you're asking them, should I buy a home now? Then likely you're not ready to buy a home. And that's kind of right. like what you're saying, right? If you're bringing up all these different scenarios that they, they possibly could happen, but they're like the worst case scenario. And if you're bringing all of these type of things up, then maybe real estate investing is not for you or maybe even investing in general, you know, cause you can lose money in the stock market. You can lose money in crypto, but it's all about understanding what you're investing in. So that's, that's a great point. So, you know, you kind of touched on um, Oklahoma. So, so where would Oklahoma you think fall in this as far as, is it more of a, maybe would squatters have a lot of rights there you think? Well, right before we hopped on here, I, I was looking up the states that had squatter rights and it it was on the list, which kind of surprised me, but um and I haven't I haven't researched it too much to know. Um I know that their eviction process is very landlord friendly. And so I think it would be very difficult to um claim squatter rights there and 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 actually, you know, not the landlord or the the homeowner not come out ahead. I'm there's obviously situations where maybe the homeowner's in the wrong. I don't I don't want to act like, um, you know, squatters' rights aren't there for a reason or aren't you know don't help in some scenarios. I'm sure you know there's all kinds of slum lords and and property that sits vacant and all, and all kinds of stuff. You know, so, um, but I would think if in a scenario where you know, you're, you're trying to get tenants out, which it, from the way it sounds, you know, squatters are there without any legal, um, right to the property. So this would be like, if you didn't use a lease and maybe your tenants are living there without a lease and, you know, and you suddenly decide you want them out, then, you know, that's kind of on you as the landlord. So there, there's all these kind of different scenarios, I think, but as far as Oklahoma goes, I, I mean, it's a, it's a red state that's landlord friendly. And I would have a hard time thinking that squatters would succeed there very easily. Yeah. I think also um, he's in the ORAT community, I uh, believe Basilo, but he, he posted something on Instagram. Um, so I guess he invests in Florida. Maybe he lives in Florida, but he posted, you know, Governor, DeS- Governor DeSantis is going to be signing a bill um, to basically help remove squatters immediately. So you know, a lot of states are probably taking action, like you're saying, probably red states. And, and I think that's super important because I even when you, when you look at where it came from, it's kind of like, how is this? It, it doesn't even seem like common sense. Like, how, how do these people mm-hmm. have rights? Um, and, you know, for me, one thing that I, I that bothers me, I guess, is a lot of times maybe you have these squatters and they damage the properties too. I mean, I think that's, the one thing is kind of like, yes, you know, maybe people 
need a place to stay and there's a vacant home and then they stay there but then it's just they kind of start damaging the property and and, and not, you're not asking them to fix things up but it's just maybe leave it as is i, I think that's what really mm-hmm. frustrates me with this whole process um and you know i don't want to get like i said i don't want to get too political about it but i think that's it, it does play a factor in, in, in investing right and that's why you have to know you know the market you invest in and i've really starting to feel as if like I kind of want to invest in red states, you know, for the cash flow. And then once I start generating a certain amount of money, I want to move that money into kind of blue states with real estate, because those are the states that maybe keep investors out or keep, you know, mm-hmm. home supply low. So that's where the appreciation comes from. So that's kind of where my mindset is right now. So that's the way I'm looking at it. But um, is there anything else you want to bring up for like the squatters and whatnot? Oh, uh, you know, I had, I had thought about, you know, I, I'm trying to put myself in, in the squatter shoes, right. So that I can have some perspective here because it's hard to imagine, um, doing that. But I know that, you know, cash for keys has become really popular and I can see how, you know, squatters just getting into a house temporarily and hoping to get paid to, to leave. Um, and like you're saying, getting paid to not try and you know to not damage the property and it's like kind of kind of a weird like blackmail situation and but yeah i know i mean i know it's it's obviously a a bigger problem in california it seems like a lot of those stories are coming um from there but um you know and again not to get too political but like it it you know where where you people where people get a grip on on strategies like this like it seems to start a landslide of of issues so you know being in a state somewhere where you know the governor is actively you know making a stance against it is you know going to be helpful um but i like what you're saying about you know splitting up your investments between the two markets between red states and blue states because you know there are a lot of people who just refuse to invest in um states that aren't landlord friendly but then the the appreciation does seem to be there a little bit more so um but yeah as long as you have a you know steady you know cash flow from from your other stuff then taking on a little bit more risk by doing that is a good idea yeah i mean if you look at like california hawaii new york i mean those are the the markets where home values are, are, you know, very high compared to the Midwest and whatnot. So I think that plays a big factor. And, you know, the, the whole other issue too now is even social media and, you know, TikTok. And I don't know if you've seen that video, but there's that one guy, um, you know, telling people how to to squat, right? How to yeah. um, become a squatter and take ownership somewhat of, of homes. And yeah, it's getting crazy out there. But um, have you had any experience with an, an eviction or having to remove a tenant or something like that? No, I never um, have had an experience like that. Um, I don't even know. Like, even when I was renting, I'm not sure that I was ever even around someone who got evicted or or who was who was dealing with that. So um, I don't. I I along the lines of what you were saying, I know CJ mentioned on X that he would had joined um like a tenants rights group and that he was like understanding like you know where they were thinking their next move was going to be and so you know that's another way to mitigate uh the risk is to you know because of social media you can get on there and you can find out like what uh, it is they their strategies for infiltrate you know, their their network uh, yeah like to that. avoid evictions or how to fight evictions or how to squat and like you if you get you know this insider scoop then you understand like what you need to do to kind of filter that risk out i like that yeah well, I mean, so so for me too, I haven't really had a full blown eviction. I mean, the closest I had, I did have a tenant. Um, they they basically just felt I think they made the wrong decision. You know, they signed the lease, they moved in, and then you know they felt like maybe this wasn't the place for them, and they pretty much made any or did anything they could to become a a problem as far as complaining about this, complaining about that. Um, I believe they called, you know, the health department on, on certain things. And so they just went through every channel to try and break their lease or make become a problem. And you know, at some point it just was like, hey, you know what, let's just part ways, um, right. you know, you know, and, and simple, right. You know, move on. It, it wasn't like, you know, they were there for a long time. So it was just, they, they were there for a few weeks and it was kind of, you know what, let's just move on from this before it becomes a headache or a problem. And 
and we can find a new tenant and find someone else that wants to actually be there. So that was, that was probably my closest to having a full blown eviction. Oh yeah. And it sounds like they just want it out, you know? And, and I think that, I mean, if, if you're a renter or landlord listening to this, I mean, we, you know, we have these leases to protect ourselves. Right. But, um, I can remember renting an apartment and being in a lease that, um, that wasn't up for another four months, but we had the opportunity to get into a house and rent instead of the apartment. And we had a dog. And so that was desirable. And so we, you know, because of the housing inventory, it was hard to come across a, a, an affordable house. And so we went ahead and signed a lease for the, um, the house and moved in, but we had three months left on our lease for the apartment and I just paid it. And when I went to, you know, say we you know weren't renewing the lease, he was like, you moved out three months ago. Like you could have just let us know and we could have rented it to some, you know, someone else. And I'm like, well, in the lease, it says that I would have, you know, I would have had to pay that for breaking the lease anyways. And he was just like, I mean, we probably could have worked something out. And I'm like, well, then what the heck, you know? And so I think that a lot of, you know, a lot of land, uh, landlords are like that where, you know, if, if they can rent the property, like it, it may not be that big of a deal if you want to, to work something out. So just communicate and, um, and don't always think that like, you you can't or that you're trapped or that you have to yeah. become a nuisance to get evicted or anything like that like there can be a better way yeah communication is so vital and i think like like you know we kind of touched on you know i said the the tenants weren't happy maybe this wasn't the place for them and i think that is more common now because a lot of people are doing virtual viewings maybe or maybe not you know they're moving from out of state they haven't actually seen the property and once they get there they're just like, oh, maybe this is not the right decision so I think that's a little more more common right now. So as, as a landlord, you know, we get such a bad, you know, reputation. But, you know, part of it is also me being a little flexible and realizing, you know, sometimes that, you know, people make mistakes and people, you know. So let's just try to, commun- like you said, communication is super important. But, um, yeah, you know, this was fun. I'm glad we we, got, we found time to do this. I know you're busy um, fulfilling some orders for for Mr. Zuber and, you know, his his community and putting together some stuff with that. and. But thanks for doing this again. Yeah, I'm having a good time and I'm glad we got to hop on. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye.